Welcome to Community Foundation Spotlight. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of the Community Foundation of the Eastern Shore. And through this series of programs, we shine the Community Foundation Spotlight on organizations that are really making a difference in our community. Uh, today, we're featuring the Village of Hope, and my guest is Jessica Smith-Harper. Jessica, welcome. Thank you. And you're the executive director. Have yes. I got the title right? Yes, you do. <laughs> you have. And uh, uh, we're going to kind of give our, our viewers an opportunity to learn more about the Village of Hope today. Wonderful. Now, uh, give a little bit of history of the Village of Hope, if you would. Sure. The Village of Hope was actually um, started by Sister Mary Elizabeth Gintling, who's of the Little Sisters of Jesus and Mary, out of the Joseph House. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was originally a Catholic ministry uh, to serve homeless men. And after a very short period of time, the sisters realized that really homeless women and children had the greater need mm -hmm. in the area. Um, and unfortunately still do. And unfortunately yeah. still do. And so um, the village switched to serving women and children. Um, and it was around the same time that actually we broke off and became our own entity uh, because the Joseph House could no longer financially mm -hmm. support two, you know, large missions such as they do. Uh, so we became our own, our own 501c3, um, and we've been serving homeless women and children ever since. Um, in about 1995, we established the medical clinic, mm -hmm. and the medical clinic serves um, mostly. Uh, patients with no insurance mm -hmm. at all, um, low-income patients with very little means or no means to pay for medical mm -hmm. care, although we do take Medicare and Medicaid mm -hmm. patients and as again, well. And again, it's a focus on women and children? Or, um, or for the medical family? clinic is all adults, okay. so men, women are both seen. Okay. Um, and, you know, we it's an important service to provide to the community because not everyone can afford uh, medical care. Mm -hmm. If you have to go um, and pay out of pocket for a doctor's visit, it's it's steep. So, mm -hmm. so you yeah the medical clinic, but you you're actually considered transitional housing. Correct. Right? Yeah. What does that mean? Trans I know, but we want to try to get her. <laughs> yes, there is some confusion. So transitional housing is, if you will, the next step between. The emergency shelter, mm -hmm. which is what most people think of when they think of homeless services, and then permanent housing, which mm -hmm. is, you know, a family moves into a house that they're renting, you know, or they're able to purchase, most often renting, and they're able to stay in that home, you know, for a period of time. We are the in-between, mm -hmm. and um, our program offers a period of up to two years for folks to get stabilized, which sometimes sounds like a long time, however, Depending on the circumstances of people's homelessness, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. it's just enough time, sometimes it's nowhere close to mm -hmm. enough time. So. And these could be families where there's been abuse Correct. involved, uh, you know, no telling how they got into the financial situation they're in, but That's right. uh, it takes a while to get them out. Now, when they're with you, what do you do to help get them out of that circumstance? Well, um, and again, it, it, it's tailored depending on the needs of the the woman or the family but it also we the program is called steps to success and we do actually have steps so the basic things when someone first comes in um, is we start with the very simple basics are the children enrolled in school do they have all the family have all their documentation photo IDs birth certificates social security cards, things that to most people seem pretty basic. But if you've been transient for a while, those things have been lost. They've been in, locked up in storage, which you can't afford to get out, you know, all, any number of things. So it starts very basic and then it moves on to job readiness, um, you know, credit repair, the women receive counseling, um, and thank, I'll plug the Community Foundation for that because we were lucky enough to start that counseling program through a grant from the Community mm -hmm. Foundation. It was a wonderful success and now we're able to sustain that. So all of the women receive on-site um, individual and group therapy, which is a wonderful service. The children can receive it as well. Um, so all of these things we try to address the whole woman, the whole family, 
um, the individual needs and then just what needs there are across the board so that when people are ready um, to leave us, hopefully they are um, able to financially support their families, they've furthered their education in some way, um, and you know the things are a little bit more stable for them in their in their home mm -hmm. environments mm -hmm. and, and how, how many uh, you have like little apartments how many how many families can you accommodate at one time we can accommodate 12 families okay. mm -hmm. and we are we are currently full um, and and this is the time of year when really the referrals are through the roof mm -hmm. and I think um, I think there's the perception that a lot of that would happen in the winter time when it's cold. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, folks from other transitional facilities and, and other shelters, we've all been sort of discussing this phenomenon. We don't know why exactly it is. I think it's a number of factors, but this is the time of year when everyone is very, very busy. I, I heard the same thing several years ago from uh, Jim Barnes over at the, the Christian mm -hmm. shelter. And I, I too was surprised when he when he said that that their busiest time of year was was you know July and August, mm -hmm. and and at least he shared with me his theory was you get in the holiday season, Christmas, people are in a giving mood, they tend to take the family member in or the family mm -hmm. in what have you, and 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 it's cold weather they don't want them out in the cold they'll tend to take them in. Um, but then if you've taken in a part of another family, mm -hmm. they tend to wear out their welcome yes, they after do. a while. And next thing you know, they're out, you know, bumping around homeless or, or between uh, living accommodations again. So it, that's always surprised me. Now, now you work, you really serve the region, don't you? The region, yes. Mm -hmm. We don't have... Technically, we serve the the lower the four counties of the Lower Eastern Shore of Maryland. However, we don't set geographic limits. Mm. We do have um, in the medical clinic. We have patients from both Maryland and Virginia who come to Salisbury for work, and so who utilize the clinic, um, and and it's good for them to be able to do it. Um, and in transitional housing, um, although most of the referrals come from why Comico County and actually even the Salisbury area, mm -hmm. we get referrals from as far away as Baltimore and Western Maryland. Really? We do, yeah. and we get referrals from Delaware quite frequently um, because we are really the only program who does just exactly what we do. Um, you know, Diaconia in Ocean City offers a very close service and they also mm -hmm. serve men which makes them more appropriate for a family that is homeless together mm -hmm. that's a, a male and, and female and children um, but we are the only ones who focus strictly on women um, and women with and children, children. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and uh, you mentioned Diaconia and uh, you uh, I think it's interesting to me that the uh, viewers know that there's a network of homeless there is. Uh, providers and uh, organizations that are addressing those issues, and, and you really don't work in isolation. You, you, yeah. you meet regularly, you communicate, you share referrals back and forth, and, and, and when someone comes into that system, that you're trying to provide the best service you can in the appropriate setting. We do, and we, we do work very closely um, together, all of us. And it's not uncommon for one of us to pick up the phone and, you know, call someone. Great example right now, there is someone who's due to come in from Christian Shelter and, and she's been waiting for an apartment to be ready. And the first thing I did was get on the phone and call Jim Barnes and, and make sure that if, if we were, you know, a few days here or there, getting the apartment ready mm -hmm. for this person that he would grant her an extension and of course mm -hmm. he said he would and and you know all of us kind of work together in that way to make sure that we're providing as as close a circle of services as we can and you're co-chairing that group for the lower shore now i am the you? new one of the new co-chairs <laughs> so, this year yes Shannon oh, Fry is the other. <laughs> thank you <laughs> so. So, Ask me again in a couple months so, and I'll let you know. But we'll put in a little plug here for Christian Shelter because mm -hmm. they are in the process of an expansion program mm -hmm. and they're trying to bring on board uh, eight new family units. Which is wonderful. Which has been a real, sh you know, uh, uh, it, it's amazed me speaking with the, the shelter providers in the area, the greatest need for shelter for, for rooms uh, last several years has been for women and children. 
Yes. Yeah, I think there's two. There's folks out there that have a stereotypical view of the homeless person is 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 some drunk mm -hmm. sleeping on a heating grate. Right. You know, a drunk middle-aged man yeah, in a box. Yeah, is... and and that that's it. And and certainly they're still out there. Mm -hmm. But one of the tragedies of the recent years in in part of the economy, economic turn down and what have you, and is is uh, is is women and children are out there on the street Absolutely. looking for places. And 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 sometimes. It, it's the economy hits the family, and then the family just disintegrates. And, yes. And and, the, and typically the kids end up with mom, and they're looking for a place to stay. Yeah. We have seen, um, and it's interesting because I'm I'm working on a grant right now, and I've been putting some statistics together about this, and it, and it's very interesting. When you look at um, the unemployment rates in Maryland and in and in the counties on the Lower Eastern Shore. Um, and then you look further at our clientele um, who are mostly unemployed and mostly unemployable because they have a ninth grade education, no particular job skills. Those folks are the ones that are, that are sort of hanging on the bottom mm -hmm. anyway, even when the economy is good. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of competition for the for the types of jobs that they, that can, they can do, can do food it. service mm -hmm. and things like that. Um, and right now, those jobs are nowhere to be found because unfortunately, people who are overqualified for that job, those types of mm -hmm. jobs, are, are having to take those jobs mm -hmm. because of their cuts. So, um, you know, it really does hit those families hard. And if they've been marginally housed, if they've been living with relatives, we see a lot of doubling up mm -hmm. among this population. You know, young girls living with mothers or grandmothers, they're pregnant and they have their small children and the, the mother is still raising maybe some teenage siblings. There's a lot of doubling up and people are really trying, but it's very difficult. Very challenging dynamics very challenging. when you get in a situation like that. Uh, you're watching Community Foundation Spotlight here on PAC-14. I'm Spicer Bell. I'm the president of the Community Foundation Eastern Shore. Uh, and today we're talking about Village of Hope, a transitional housing program here in Salisbury for uh, women and children. And my guest is Jessica Smith Harper. Uh, she's the executive director there at the, at, at the village. Uh, I, I'm gonna, let's put in another plug while I okay. think of it. You have a fundraising event coming up. We do. That looks like it's going to be real fun. Yes, it will. So it, it's it's going to be a it's a crab feast, mm -hmm. and uh, there's going to be it's going to be down on the uh, the on the water down in Bival. Yes. Uh, you know, tell our viewers about that and how they can get tickets and what have you. Well, we are very lucky enough. Um, to have some friends and supporters who are offering the use of their beautiful home um, for a crab feast, which is going to be held on September 17th from, I believe, 4 to 8 p.m. Do I have the time That's correct? I do. That's what the flyer says. Um, the tickets are $75 per person, and the, the kids, 12 and under, are $10. Um, we really wanted to make it something that was more family friendly, mm -hmm. um, and so the kids are going to be able to come to this one too, and it's going to be crabs and corn on the cob and hot dogs, hamburgers, all that good stuff, mm -hmm. and all to benefit the Village of Hope. Right. So I'm excited about it, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Very casual, laid back, and good yeah, you know, end of some, summer it's, fundraiser. It, 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 when it, it said something here about the dress was end of summer casual. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, that's those t-shirts that I've been wearing out all summer yep. and I can get one more shot. Absolutely, of. and it doesn't matter if you so. get a bunch of Old Bay on it or uh, so. butter from your mm -hmm. corn. So, so absolutely. And, and that is... Um, on our website, and I'll take a minute to plug the Great. website. And our friends here at PAC-14 will show it on the screen, too, Wonderful. I'm sure. Okay, and that's um, www.villageofhope.us. Um, there is an events page on there which has the crab feast information, and it um, has information anytime we're doing an event, such as the Great Clue Caper or another fundraiser. Um, and uh, there's also a page on there called How to Help, which is important. I know people always ask how they can help us. Um, and although we love people's, you know, financial donations, those are always appreciated, there are other things that we need, too, um, that people can give. Their, their time um, is one of them. Um, mm -hmm. We always have needs for helpers at the village doing specific things. Um, and 
uh, you know, some things like diapers and canned goods and cleaning products for, for the women in transitional is also yeah. appreciated. So all of that information is on the website. And, and you have a substantial uh, piece of land there with several acres, I think. Yes, we do. <laughs> I mean, if somebody's a gardener they, and, and they'd like to come over and adopt a flower bed or something, I've got to chase them away. I will you? not. If someone wants to come over, we've had volunteers in the past who've, who've, who've come over and um, and helped us with the grass. Um, we have a lot of you know trees and hedges and it's a five acre piece of property okay. so we always have needs for that. Yes, there's no, no, a lot of opportunities for Absolutely. folks to help out mm -hmm. and, uh, and create the kind of environment that you want to provide for for these families in in transition so that yes. you, you get them uh, give, give them that that boost. That, Absolutely. That, that hand up uh, mm -hmm. certainly. Where's the money come from? I mean, you're, you're five acres, you're, you're 12 apartments, you're a medical clinic. Uh, who's footing the bill for this? Well, you know what? Who, who is footing the bill is, you know, our, our friends and neighbors. We are very fortunate that um, we receive a large chunk of funding from uh, United Way of the Lower Eastern Shore. Um, and the bulk of our, the remainder of our donations are private donations mm -hmm. from people in the community. They come through either through our fundraising events, um, different appeals that we do throughout the year, or unsolicited. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's always wonderful when we get that unsolicited, mm -hmm. you know, casual day check or or we have people who send us $10 a month or $25 mm -hmm. a month faithfully like clockwork. And it's wonderful because all those dollars add up mm -hmm. and they're really um, what helps us out. We do get some, we do get some um, foundation grants and, and we've applied to the community foundation for some grants before and um, I, you know we've gotten some from the Weinberg Foundation mm -hmm. in Baltimore and some private foundations mm -hmm. but the bulk of it is it's private donations. Private donations, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's something that, that I, I've suggested to, to folks on uh, a number of occasions. I know we have some donors that do it. Is it, we we tend often on people's special occasions, whether it's their anniversary or their their birthday or as sometimes Christmas. We tend to give uh, gifts that people really don't need. Yes. <laughs> and it, it's great to write a check to an organization like Village of Hope. And, and do it in, in the name of the person that Absolutely. you're remembering on that birthday or, or something like that. You may have a you, you may have a loved one that passed on, mm -hmm. and it's an opportunity to remember them by uh, by giving a gift to an organization that's making a difference in the community. So we'll, we'll try to plant that seed. It's wonderful, people. and I I do it myself for uh, you know when I, especially if I have friends who live out of town and I know that there's a local charity that they're involved mm -hmm. with. You know, I'll make a donation for birthdays and Christmas and things mm -hmm. like that because, you know, that money goes, means so much um, and, and it's hard to know what people really want or need. Yeah. Um, but I think that's something that the recipient appreciates and the nonprofit appreciates it too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, if somebody was interested in, in trying to get involved, mm -hmm. can they contact you and come over and? get the, a tour? Or they can um, and there is actually once again on the website there is a place if they want to email because they're interested in volunteering mm -hmm. there's a volunteer form there to do that um, there's also the contact information on there um, and I I love to give tours when people come over okay. um, and I try to encourage people when I meet someone in the, new in the community who I know hasn't hasn't come out to the village I try to pull them out and show them what we do because I'm very proud of what we do yeah. you do you do it's, it, it really is uh, it's it's unfortunate that we have that need in our community it is. but it's a blessing that we have uh, you know programs like yours uh, to help meet that need and, and frustrating that unfortunately you've been in a growth industry in recent years. Unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, it, without exaggeration, if I had 50 apartments, I could have them all filled. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. unfortunately, we, you know, we couldn't sustain something right. of that size, but it just shows the need that there is in the community, unfortunately, mm -hmm. right now. Uh, any other, you know, current projects that you all have in, on the drawing board or? Well, we, we, we were um, recently funded by the Quality Health Foundation for the, for the clinic. And um, this is worth mentioning because it's, the, the money is to be used for uh, patients who are diabetic 
or hypertensive. And that's a lot of the patients that come into the clinic. We, we see a lot of untreated diabetes or unmanaged diabetes coming in, uh, often folks referred over mm -hmm. from the hospital. So this, this grant project is going to offset the cost of office visits for those folks. Um, and we're working closely with PRMC they, um, to ensure that we can get that lab work covered for them as well so that we can get their health under control. Mm -hmm. So that's something really important that we're working on right now that for the clinic. Get them stabilized. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. The, the complications from diabetes are just, they're numerous and none of them are good. Mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. Yeah. So. So you need to cons remember the Community Foundations Help Your Neighbor Grants. I think you've gotten some Absolutely. of those. Absolutely. Some of the mm -hmm. organizations have used those for prescription assistance. It really helps get that part of a person's life stabilized Absolutely. so that they can then move on to other issues. Because it's very important. I mean, a person, you can't, what can you do if you don't have your health? That's right. That's right. So now you have a, a, a fundraiser we're talking about out here in the in the hall that I imagine <laughs> it's been a lot of fun for a lot of organizations in recent so. years. Now that's in the spring. It is. It's in April. It's usually uh, I believe it's going to be I'm not sure of the date, but it's the second Sunday in April again this mm -hmm. again this year. And that's the Great Clue Caper, mm -hmm. which this will be our third annual. Mm -hmm in April of 2012. Tell, tell, tell our viewers a little bit about the great clue, clue caper. We might be able to recruit some more. Actually, you had more, you, you maxed out in terms of teams last we year. We maxed didn't? out in terms of teams. Yeah. Um, and we hope to do the same again this year. Uh, the great clue caper is a lot of fun. Um, Jackie Jennings, who's one of our board members, is the brain child of that, and she, you know, brought this great idea to us, and, it, and it's it's been a lot of fun for a lot of people. What happens is they form teams of two to four, and they're given clues, and they have to go around Wicomico County and try to solve the clues. Some are puzzles, some are physical challenges, um, and at the end, there's a wonderful prize, which is a thousand dollars to split amongst the team members and a thousand dollars that goes to the 501c3 of their choice. Mm -hmm. So um, we've two years now had, you know, teams who knew exactly who they wanted to give their prize money to and it was wonderful to be able to write out those checks to another organization and, you know, yeah. spread the spread the wealth a little. And I've, I've not participated, but I've talked to some participants and apparently it's a, it's a real <laughs> it's a real event. It's a real event, and even it's we've got some folks fun. from PAC-14 who have even uh, participated in, in the Clue Caper. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's, it's nice. And people put teams together um, from organizations or that, you know, it's just a family or a group of friends, and they have mm -hmm. in mind who they'd like mm -hmm. to donate their team money to, and it's so much fun. It's so much fun. I mean, so, and that'll be next April. It will. So people can, and actually what they'll need to do is just watch for those signs around That's town. right. When you see the yellow clue sign, <laughs> you will know that so, clue caper time is upon us. Very good. Well, Jessica, what, have I, what should I have asked that I've missed here in terms of helping folks learn more about the, the Village of Hope? Well, you did a great job of asking lots of good questions. So <laughs> I, I, try to, I try to ask the questions <laughs> that you gave me. You know. So um, I, I think, you know, there's a lot that's, that's, that you've already covered, but um, I would invite people to check out our website, mm -hmm. um, come out and visit, give me a call if they'd like a tour. Um, another thing is, we were talking earlier about volunteers, they can go on the Shore Can website. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of volunteer postings that are on there that are continuous need. Um, okay. And again, even for the Clue Caper, when time draws near, we'll be putting that up there as well for folks to help out with parking cars and manning mm -hmm. the Clue sites and things like that. So, so you can participate as a competitor or you can just come out there, have, have fun. And, yes. uh, and and enjoy the event. Exactly. So, so exactly. Neat. Well, you mentioned Shorecan, and, and that's been a great, uh, it, it's been a kind of an adventure and a great success for the Community Foundation. We've now, it's all coming up on two years since we adopted the Shorecan Volunteer Center. And if there's somebody, if you're out there and, and you have the availability of some time, get involved with the community. We have a wonderful network of uh, organizations in the community that can use your volunteer time. Many of them are listed on the Shorecan website, and you just go to the www.shorecan, S-H-O-R-E-C-A-N.org, and, uh, and, and you'll, be, you'll see a, a listing of current 
active volunteer opportunities in the community and you can through the link there you can communicate with the organizations and uh, put yourself to work so it's a little or as much as you as exactly. you want so um, Jessica I certainly wish you and and all of the your board and everybody at the Village of Hope uh, the best and thank you uh, look forward to you having continued success in the coming years Thank you very much. Thank you for coming and visit with us. Absolutely. So. It's my pleasure. And we're going to ask you to mark your calendar. Uh, every year in early November, the Community Foundation has an annual meeting, a report to the community of the activities of the Community Foundation. This year it's going to be on November the 4th. Yeah, it's at 11.30 in the morning. It's going to be at the Fountains Conference Center. If you've never been to one of our annual meetings, uh, watch for it. Check out our website at www.cfes.org and, uh, and get involved. Uh, we would, uh, we'd love to have you come out, learn more about what we do, learn more about organizations like the Village of Hope. And uh, any given year, the Community Foundation supports, supports over 300 nonprofit organizations throughout the region. And we're only able to do this uh, because of our donors. They're, they're folks who allow us to help them manage their charitable giving and, and try to maximize the impact it has. Uh, many folks who make donations to the Community Foundation start during their lifetime, but they set up arrangements so that those funds can continue to do their charitable gift and be giving and be part of their legacy uh, after they're gone. So, uh, take time to find out more about the Community Foundation. Take tour, more time to find out more about Village of Hope and the other great nonprofit organizations we have here so, serving the Lower Eastern Shore. And thank you for watching Community Foundation Spotlight. And thank you for supporting PAC-14. Would you like to see your community organization or nonprofit group featured on PAC-14? To get started, contact us at 410-677-5014 or visit our website at www.pac14.org. PAC-14 is a great way to connect with your community.